Today we're going to be taking a little deeper dive into the Baofeng UV21R. We're going to go through the functions and tell you how to set up a repeater without using a programmer. So stay tuned. So today we're going to take a deeper dive and look at all the bells and whistles and functions of the Baofeng UV21R which I believe is either now the fourth or the fifth iteration of the popular Baofeng UV5R. So, a 5R on some more steroids. Let's get right into it and look at it here. There's a lot that goes along with this radio, so I've got the little handbook here. Uh, there's my cheat sheet. So, let's get started. Got the battery in. It's charged. So, let's start looking at everything on the exterior of the radio first before we get to the menu. So of course, you have your antenna connection here. It's an SMA male. Your PTT, main PTT is right here. You have three buttons below your PTT. The first one is going to be your FM broadcast and monitoring key. This is your flashlight or one touch search key, which is the second one here. And the third one is going to be your power selectable key or your emergency key. That's kind of nifty. You could change your power from the uh, third. Or PTT right here, or third button on the side. You have your handy LED flashlight. You have your uh, your this part right up here. Actually, looks like a gray button, but that's your LED for your talk and transmit is right there. Your color screen. You have a the menu key is right here. The exit key. Your A and B switching between bands A or B that you're watching or listening to and transmitting on. Your VFO and a, a memory channel right here. Your keypad, your speaker, navigation keys for your menus right in here. Your Kenwood attachment, uh, microphone, speaker area is right in here. Down the back, you have, of course, the batteries right here. Clip in for your stylish belt clips or the screws rather. This battery comes in or comes with a screw in to hold it in place. One of my first Balfangs I've ever had to do that. It's kind of a pain, but it's a neat, neat idea, I guess, overall. And then your charger via USB C or, of course, the sensors for your cradle charging. So, all right, guys, most recently I uh, got my Nagoya NA320A antenna in from BTEC. It's a quarter wave on two meters, one, uh, half wave on 1.25, and a five eighths on 70 centimeters. So uh, I got myself a tri band antenna that will be hooking up to this. All right, now that we got the antenna attached, just so that we don't accidentally press our PTT and possibly explode the radio, um, let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll go through the menus. I think I've already deactivated the sound just because this beeps and the voice was annoying. So to get into your menu, you again, you press this green button here and we'll go over what's here. So first we have squelch, your frequency step, your TX power between high and low. And when I did the unboxing, I did a power test on it and you can check that out right up here in the corner. So this is your save battery option here, and it's either an off or in ratios. Uh, I've never used it before, but basically it's saying if you use a higher ratio, the battery lasts longer, but you may start missing the first couple syllables while you're, uh, the transmission's coming in, you're on the receiving end. So sorry about that. I need to figure out how to get a uh, time off a little bit longer. There's your voice, a uh, wide or narrow band, your, um, LCD illumination. So that one will probably need to go ahead and we need to keep on for a little bit longer. We'll do 15 seconds. Oop, there we go. Um, that's your dual watch and dual reception. Your, let's see. Yep, and dual reception. Your uh, keyboard uh, prompt. Turn that off. That's just the beeping for your keyboards, your timeout transmission timer. Then you have your receive and transmit um, for your CTCSS, DCS, 
menus here. Scanning CTCSS and you have a scanning DCS. So if you turn that on, you could actually select a specific CTCSS or a DCS uh, tone. And if you have plenty of these plugged in here um, into your, uh, I believe it's if you have them into your memory, you can uh, just go through and let it cycle. And of course, it'll pick up an RX if it happens to hit a frequency with that particular tone, which is cool. So this, you could actually save all those scans here. Uh, that's your voice language. This has to do with uh, DTMF side tones, which I personally never used. Um, S coding, which is, uh, again, that has to do with the DTMF uh, codes, which I do not do very much digital at all, if I remember correctly. This is the scanner resume. Uh, this is the PTT ID. Uh, it's when to send PTID. PTT ID codes are sent during either the beginning or end of a transmission there. A lot of stuff on this little bow find that I haven't played with yet. So um, this is your PTT ID delay. How you want your A and B uh, bands here displayed by name or frequency. You can get to those. Uh, the busy channel lockout. Automatic keyboard, keypad lock. So you could actually turn this on that once you've, if you don't use a keyboard within a certain amount of time, it'll just lock the keyboard. There's your shifts, your positive and negatives, your offsets, uh, how to save, to save and delete memory and delete channels. And as uh, your alarm mode, squelch tail elimination. Never actually used that myself either. Uh, Squelch, uh, squelch uh, tail elimination for a repeater. Your Roger beeps. Your um, that was a Roger beep. What was that one? That's the repeater. Um, delay of the tone repeater. You can do that. Roger beeping. Uh, your tone burst. Menu exit time. So that's that's the one we want to turn up here a little bit. So we'll do like twenty seconds. Uh, your voice delay, your power on message. I, there's a way, I think, for this radio particularly, you could put in a logo if you want, or you can have the voltage come on when you turn on the radio. Frequency hopping function to prevent interference from outside the group. wonder if that's almost like a tone of some sort. You can reset. You can do a power on password if you want, if you want to power, I mean, password protect. Your bow fangs. Um, comes with a stopwatch. I actually tried this out. We'll just go ahead and do it. It's kind of fun. Then you just menu to start timing it. Stop. Exit. And you go back out. So I guess it could be handy. And then finally your version. And uh, the firmware and the hardware version for this. So one of the things I've noticed in this menu that this particular model doesn't have. So there are BF or the UV21Rs. They come in an M mic version or an L Lima version. And if you have the mic version, it actually supports AM108 to 136, which I believe is airband AM listening. And it will also do police 35, uh, excuse me, 350 to 390 uh, megahertz scanning reception for a police scanner and voice scrambling functions. So there's actually a menu there that I do not have on this model, which is a scramble function. And it says that it's a voice inversion function that enables private communications by scrambling voice signals. And then it'll give you an icon when you're actually scrambling up here to, um, for your transmission, which I thought was interesting, but bummer. I don't have that one. So we again have a souped up steroids Balfang right here. So, all right now, so let me just go through real quick to show you how to program in a repeater on this one. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to option 30, no it's 31, sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and go to 31 and I'm gonna delete a channel. So let's just go to, I think I deleted pretty much everything. No, I did not delete the stocks on this. 
So let's just delete channel three right there. It should be confirmed and we can check that again by trying to delete a channel and you see there's just blinking 003. There's no delete before that. So this one's already been clear. Okay. The good thing about, or the easy thing about programming a repeater into the UV21 is that all the sub functions you need, the shift and um, your offset, memory and delete are all sequential in the menu, which is great. Some of the older Balfangs are like all the way on the 13, 14, then up to 30 or somewhere in there. So anyway, so what we'll do is we'll go back here and we'll make sure we are in uh, VFO mode. Which let's just say um, I'm actually going to use that same frequency because it has to be a common repeater around here. Okay, we're going to use that one Then we're going to go to menu. And then now to set our shift, we just go back to 28. And it does happen to be a plus. You can press OK, change it if you need to. You go to 29, you change your offset. This one is already set. It's 0 0.600 megahertz. So we're going positive on transmission. And now we want to put it in memory. So then you would find a channel. Keep thinking up, it's going up. There we go. And as you see, there's nothing on channel for three. So once it's there, you'd press OK. Usually that says retrieving memory, so I make sure you do it again. I have found out that's what Balfangs need. So there we go. That should be it. And now if we return, and if we go ahead and go back to memory mode, as you see, we are on channel three there. So I already put it in previously on channel one. If you see now channel two, channel three. We got it in there. And should be able to hear it. Usually I can hit this from the shack. Radio check. There you go. Nice and clear. Got it in. So that's how you would program in your repeater. All right, well, there are the bells and whistles of the Baofeng UV21R or the BF21 series, whichever they want to call it. Um, Tri-band radio. Great little radio, in my opinion. Um, it Again, it's a heavy-duty little radio. feels like a harder plastic. Um, I'm probably going to put a couple tiger tails on this to increase my range. And I definitely want to go play around with some 1.25 meter. So this will be fun. Hope this helps you guys. And remember, always be getting ready. We'll see you next time.